So what do I think of RV living so far? It's been a couple of weeks now and I think I got some thoughts on the matter. <laughs> First of all, I'm going to say that there are some things about it that I'm learning and wouldn't have known until I was here in this position. Some good, some bad. So let me start off by saying I haven't experienced all forms of RVing yet. So far, all I've been doing is boondocking. For those that don't know, boondocking is when you're not connected to anything. You're running on your own power, your own water, everything. Your tanks are filling up, you're empty, or your fresh water is going down. That's called boondocking. I've been behind a Walmart boondocking for a while now. Aside from the first few days when I moved around each night, uh, most of the time I'm, I'm in this, this area. I've had things like the cops come when I'm not there, checking out my rig, looking in the windows, taking down my license plate number. That was a bit of a scare. I've had issues at nighttime where people, I don't know if they're high or they're drunk or whatever, uh, trying to get in. Uh, it's, it's been an experience. I got to say so far, it's been, uh, there's, there's been a couple of tense moments, you know, and then there's other RVers, you know, it's, you, you can't please everybody all the time. That's kind of what it boils down to. So you have some drama here. It's just like real life. Nothing changes there, but you know, it's not all bad. It's really good. I, I enjoy having the comfort of it being there. I enjoy the size of it. It's, it's, um, it takes a bit of juggling, you know, the space and trying to put everything in its place and having a place for everything and, and really downsizing everything. That's kind of the, the final destination for me. And I'm still sorting that out. I'm going to dollar stores. I'm buying little cupboard organizers, stuff like that. You know, this is, this is a process. It's a, there, there's some growing pains involved in this. Sleep, for example, you know, the walls aren't as thick as a house. So you hear every little thing outside the rig. That took some getting used to. When I'm out on trail, it wasn't so bad because it, it gets really silent at night. You're not, you're not hearing highway noise. You're not hearing cars, trucks, people talking. Um, it's just such a different, different environment for sleeping. And, and I was really tired there for a few days I, until I kind of settled down and got used to it and, and sort of learned to just accept that those noises are going on around you all the time. Then there's preservation of water. I'm always very careful about how much water I have on board. I always need fresh water. I have spare tanks. I have a five gallon and a 2.5 and I use those for drinking mostly, but sometimes I put them right into the tank if I need extra water for flushing the toilet or whatever. The toilet's pretty good. It doesn't use much for flush at all, which is quite nice. But, you know, these are just things that, these are just things you don't think about. Set up, tearing it down. Uh, really happy about that, that I got a Class C. If I had a, a toy hauler, if I had like a, a trailer behind me, the process would be so much longer. I would have to take up the jacks manually. I'd have to hook it up and hook on the wiring and everything. With this, I basically, I just pull in the slides and go. I mean, that's it. There's not much more to it. As I leave out, like I have a little blender, Ninja blender that, that has suction cups on it. It'll stay right on that counter. It won't move. Stuff like that's great. I love having stuff like that. Where I don't have to put everything away all the time. If I have a few things out on the, the counter or the table, um, I have like blinds in the front that I'm constantly moving. I have seat cushions to raise up people that are sitting in the two front seats. There's all kinds of little things that you do, but you get it down to an art form. I mean, after you get used to it for a while, it's just like, doom, boom, doom, shut off the water pump, shut off the propane. Oh, let's go. We're done. I find myself cooking more than I used to. I think it's because I like being outdoors. I fire up the barbecue a lot. Wow, the grill, the Blackstone. And it's it's really enjoyable. I love it. Then there's the dreaded winterizing, which is coming up in a day or two. 
Uh, this will be a first for me. Uh, as I said earlier, I may try to get somebody else to help me do it the first time. I watched a lot of videos. I'm pretty sure I know how I want to do it with using the internal pump and food grade antifreeze and all that fun stuff. But it'll also mean that I'm over a month uh, without the comforts, you know, with running without running water. I'll have to go use a toilet over in a Walmart or at a friend's or something. Uh, but, you know, that's not bad. It's just something you got to deal with. But, you know, it is something to consider. So that means I'm going to go and flush my tanks tomorrow in the morning and, and make sure they're all clean and ready for the winter. Well, for winterizing. Because chances are another week or two I might just open them up again and dewinter. Dewinterize? Yeah, dewinterize. But I got to say, uh, the cops coming here is... is uh, very much the scariest thing here so far. Them coming and looking around, checking into to my rig, looking inside. That that kind of that kind of wigged me out a bit. And the, the hardest part was I wasn't even here when it was happening. So I'm kind of freaking out about that. You know, I don't know what to do. It's like you feel helpless because People are around, they know what's happening, they're watching them do it. They can't interfere. You can't interfere with police investigation or whatever. That's that's against the law here in Canada. Uh, however, it's also my home and they cannot trespass. They can't come in here unless I, I welcome them in. They need a warrant. I do not have to allow them, uh, you know, entrance here. So anyway, it's been a hell of a ride so far. Definitely a hell of a ride, but you know what? I wouldn't trade it for anything. Uh, it's 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 pretty badass. It's it's uh, it's exciting. It's it's sustainable. I think it's sustainable. Um, I, I have another video coming about being ripped off by dealers. So I do want to share that with you. I think that's really important knowledge to have to watch out for certain RV dealers. I think we can help each other there. That's coming up. Uh, I got some trips coming up. I'm going to Sanford, Florida in uh, another few weeks. So I have to get the rig towed. Like I, anyway, I've got my car being set up for towing. It's a lot of videos, a lot of traveling, a lot of things going on, uh, and hiking. I will definitely, I'm for two months I'll be in Florida. I'm thinking of going for a hike down there, or at least, or maybe even up to Georgia and do some of the AT for a while. We'll see how the weather is, see how I see how I feel. But yeah, pretty excited. Anyway, let's go get it. Thanks for coming along, guys. Uh, it's pretty exciting. This whole RV thing's pretty exciting.